Everything about the Form I-20 is explained in this video. The most important do's and don'ts and exactly what you should be avoiding so that you do not get into trouble with the visa authorities is also explained in this video. The I-20 form is a very, very important document which has, well, <laughs> let's just say way too much information to comprehend in its first go. And if you have it for the first time or if you're about to receive it, here's what you should be looking out for. First, let's briefly talk about how you can get your I-20 if you don't have one yet. First thing you'll need is an admission into a US university for a master's undergraduate or a PhD program essentially. Then you have to prove the finances to the university that yes, I can actually afford the education, I can afford this degree. Finally, the university will mail the physical I-20 to your registered address with the university. So it will come in a package and you will have to receive it and you open the package and there's your I-20 in your hands physically. Now that you have the I-20 in your hands, let's briefly talk about the importance of this I-20 because not a lot of people understand what kind of an important document it is. Your Form I-20 is used for applying to the US visa. Generally, this visa is for the F1 or M1 category. The I-20s look very similar, so we're gonna do F1 in this video. The I-20 will be required by the CBP officer, the Customs and Border Patrol officer who will be granting you entry into the United States once you actually fly to that country. It is also your proof of academic status that yes, you are studying at a US university. It is used to get a social security number, which is essentially a very important document. You need this to actually work in the US legally. It is a document that is shown to employers during the hiring. Your I-20 will still be required at that point. It will be needed if you need to reapply for the US visa for any reason. Sometimes you have to reapply and I-20 is required then. And finally, if you are re-entering the United States after traveling overseas, you will still need your I-20 copy if you are a student still. So as you may understand, very important document here, guys. Let's talk about what happens if your I-20 has a minor incorrect detail on it. What do you do? Do you just sit back, apply for the visa and think you'll go ahead, get it fixed later on? No. You immediately connect with your DSO, your designated school official. Let them know that there's a mistake on my I-20 and I need this fixed ASAP. Then go ahead, generate an updated I-20 for you and that I-20 will be mailed to you again physically. Now let's talk about what is present on your I-20. Now the I-20 is a three-page document. We're gonna discuss the first page first. If you see the top left portion of the I-20, in bold letters, you will find your service ID. The service ID is essentially your service database information, which points to your tuple, which essentially tells the US government who you are, who your dependents are. Any student coming to the United States in today's day and age will have a service ID that's a record of their candidacy stored with the US government, not the school. This service ID is also your unique ID as a student to the US government. Remember that the service ID will be different for each and every I-20 you receive or each and every admit you receive and then you get the I-20. Every service ID will be different, but that's not a problem. Don't worry about it because this is actually very normal and you will in the end, of course, only move forward with one. The next box you will see over here, the first box on this I-20 form is for your personal information. It will contain things like your name, your country of birth, your date of birth, your citizenship information, and which visa class you're applying for on the right. In this case, the visa class is F1 for reference. Remember, if any information here is not matching with your passport, you should connect with your DSO immediately and get it updated. The next rectangle you will see over here is for the school information. It contains school level information that you are going to be attending. So it will have the school name, the school address. It will also have the contact official from the school who will know more about your case and some other things about the school itself. The next rectangle here is for the program of study. The program that you're actually going to be studying or attending, that's the, that's the details that are present in the next box. So it will contain details like which education level you're going for, bachelor's, master's, or doctorate. It will have the major name that you're going for. Unless you're going for two majors or double majors essentially, which most of you won't, in that case, your uh, major two will be none. Very important, it will have your program start date. Remember, in general, you can only apply for the US visa up to 120 days in advance of this program start date. But for this year specifically, the US government said that you can do it up to 365 days in advance looking at the 
long wait times. It will also have your program end date. Now, this is also important because generally after this date is when you start your OPT. But that basically means working in the United States after your degree. It will have your class start date, that means when you start attending the classes, and it will have your earliest admission date, which is essentially 30 days before your program start date, because you can only fly to the US in advance, basically 30 days in advance of your program start date. The next box here will be for financials. Now, this is a very important one. Remember, when you got this I-20 from the university, you had to prove certain financials to them. The left side will state exactly how much finances your school demanded you to show. So tuition, living expenses, any other miscellaneous expenses that the school told that you will have. This is generally an exaggerated amount. It's not exactly what you'll be spending, but they kind of exaggerated so that they can show that you can afford even the exaggerated expense. The right side will contain how you will be affording your education, how you showed the school that you will be able to afford this education. And these numbers, by the way, are usually always for nine months in the United States. Now on the right side, generally you may see things like personal funds, scholarships, which you can see in the sample as well. But a lot of other times you will see loans and there's various other ways to actually prove your finances, right? But we're not gonna go deep into those. For now, I hope you understand the purpose of the financials box. The next one is remarks from your DSO. Generally, it can be empty or it can have some basic things like needs to report to school by this date or etc. etc. Really, this is not as important, but if your remarks are filled, of course, take a look at it. The next box over here is the school attestation. This basically asks the DSO about your eligibility to actually attend that program and that the DSO has confirmed all of your documents and verified that you are eligible to study in the US and it asks for their signature. The final box on the first page is the student's attestation, which will essentially ask you the same thing that yes, you are eligible and you confirm that all the documents presented are correct and you know that there's nothing illegal going on. And then of course you have to sign this I-20. Remember that your guardian signature is only required if you are under 18 years of age. Otherwise that can be left empty. The next page will start with employment authorizations, which are basically your CPT and OPT. If you are going to be taking up these CPTs while you're studying OPTs afterwards, well, those are going to be filled at that point in time. For now, this is left empty. Then there are some other things like gap gap extensions if you want to delay your degree sometime, if you want to have a gap year, or you know, things like reduced course load if you're not able to keep up with the pace and you need to do it slower, you know, things like that. But these are more or less not going to be used for most cases. What you will be using, however, is the travel endorsement section. This section will note any permission that you've taken from your DSO to travel outside the United States. Remember that each signature is valid for one year. The third page of the I-20 is nothing but information to students and then information to schools essentially, right? This part, of course, you want to read in detail by yourself, but that's really about it. That's your whole I-20 summarized, guys. If you like this video, we have more such content coming up on this channel. Comment down below, let me know what you would like to see from us. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And of course, reach out to our Instagram page, follow us over there for more such informative content for you guys. There's a lot more coming in terms of scholarships that you can apply to, even if you're going to school very soon, in terms of loans that you can take up with very low rates of interest, and in terms of your visa processing. I'm happy to welcome you here as a new member of our community. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Take care.